welcome to today's segment of The Power of Money. This is an awesome show, a special production. I have in the studio today three absolutely over-the-top, remarkable alpha female African-American women. And we are going to be talking about women, politics, and power. That's right. We're going to go into the Holy Grail. And I'm going to introduce my guests today for all of you. I have uh, Marsha Bonhart, who is a co-anchor on WDTN Channel 2, NBC Affiliate News in Dayton, Ohio. I have next to me the Honorable Ryan McGlynn, the former mayor of Dayton, Ohio, and is currently the vice chair of the Ohio Democratic Party. It's my understanding she is the first African-American woman to hold this very prestigious position. And, and viewers, she, she is no joke. Don't let her pretty demeanor surprise you. <laughs> uh, and I have a directly across from me uh, Barry Ellen Roberts, who is a New York Times best-selling author of Roberts versus Texaco. She was the, I think history has documented that she won the largest class action lawsuit in American history, $175 million against Texaco Oil, and uh, she is also a uh, cancer survivor here today from Atlanta, Georgia. So bear with me. You want to sit down. You want to get familiar with these women. We're going to be talking about amongst ourselves, and you get to kind of participate by listening in and watching uh, this very, very sensitive subject. And so we're going to start with Marsha. Yes, Michelle. Hi. Hi, how are you? Thanks for having give, me. Give our viewers a little bit of background about yourself, and, and I know you've been in media forever. I've been in media over three decades. Woo, uh, my goodness, yes. that's a long time. A long time and a lot of stories. I'm <laughs> sure, <laughs> I'm sure. I started in radio and then uh, moved on to, uh, to television um, many years ago in my hometown of Toledo. Okay. And I uh, have been in Dayton twice. This is my second time in the Dayton market, and this time I've been here for 24 years. Oh, my goodness. You've got some stories. Let's deal with you, madam. <laughs> oh, I'm a native Daytonian. I was born and reared here, went to the Dayton Public School, um, been a state representative, a state senator, as first African-American female state senator. Mm. Um, I was... I was also a minority leader of the Senate, and then I came back and was the first female mayor for Dayton, and now I'm vice chair of the state uh, Democratic Party, and I, they keep telling me I'm probably the longest serving vice chair that they've had, so. <laughs> Wonderful. And you, madam? Well, I am a native Ohioan, grew up in Cincinnati, Ohio. Um, I've lived some of everywhere since I left Cincinnati. Uh, currently, I'm residing in Atlanta. Uh, I am working on two books right now. <laughs> wow. uh, one about, as you said, my struggle against cancer, and another I'm writing, I'm co-authoring with a young lady uh, dealing with child sexual abuse. Mm. Wow, you're touching child sexual abuse. Yes, yes, because it's a very current subject. Mm -hmm. um, it's something that's not easy to talk about. It's certainly not easy to write about, and it's <coughs> certainly not easy to live with. And it's something that it's another one of those subjects that it's taboo, but we've got to talk about it. I couldn't agree with you more. And I, I think it's, I, I just no, wanted to on, say that on, I think on. that especially uh, coming from someone as noted as you, Barry, that it, it could really help uh, open up the door for African Americans to be able to uh, start dealing with the subject. And that's one of the subject areas that we really don't deal with very well. And so having someone of your stature to uh, write about that could be a step in the right direction of having the issue addressed. So mm -hmm. I Thank commend you, you for mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. We try to pretend that it doesn't happen within our community. Um, right. We always think and try to say that it happens more mainstream in, in other ethnic groups, but unfortunately it does happen in black families. Oh yes, oh yes, it's that dirty little secret mm -hmm. that um, I think needs to get air. That's my feeling about it the number of children whose lives are absolutely destroyed because of that type of violation of their innocence. Disgusting. Absolutely. And when you talk about power, <coughs> the whole idea of it is that the victim is powerless. Mm -hmm. You know, child. there is no mm -hmm. power. And mm -hmm. it's a child. And, and what in my research, what I'm finding is that 
while it's predominantly girls, and as you can look at the headlines now, more and more and more it's coming about our young men. It's mm -hmm. coming out about our young men that have who been are being abused. abused. Mm -hmm. Well, the color purple, um, and one of the things that was interesting about mm -hmm. the color purple was that the movie, which was done by Steven Spielberg, uh, was done for a male point of view, right. but the play mm -hmm. was done by Oprah Winfrey, which was done from a female point of view. And, and it made the difference in the world where it, it delicately opened up the subject in a way that you could see it but not be offended. Yeah. Whereas I think when uh, Color Purple was done <coughs> by the male perspective, it was overshadowed. Right. And I think with her interjecting some of her personal feelings as mm -hmm. well, because it's, it's been noted and it, they, they, it's no secret that she was abused as a child, as mm -hmm. a young girl. Well, I think you bring an interesting um, uh, uh, conversation about this male point of view versus female point of view. Mm -hmm. And all of you are incredibly strong and very, very successful women. And I think it's fair to say that uh, your success has been uh, in the male world with a female point of view. Is that fair? Yeah, I, I guess we could say that, certainly. Okay. But I, I know after knowing Barry for the time that I've known her uh -huh. and after reading the book and the, the detailed accounts of her experiences, from college all the way <laughs> through her experience uh, with, with uh, you know, the, the incident with Texaco. It's just amazing how you handled that and how, how smart you were um, because she was basically all alone. I mean, oh there, was no, there was no backup. There was no support no. for her, none whatsoever. But I, I kind of sensed, and you probably have had that same experience, um, uh, Ryan, that when you are pushing an agenda that other people don't see or cannot understand, there is a period where you are alone, a lot. Is that a fair statement? I think it's absolutely a fair statement for any uh, females that are, are leaders and mm -hmm. that are visionary and, and that, that you have to be extremely strong because so many times you have to truly stand alone. Mm -hmm. And so you have to know within yourself that you're doing the right thing because at the end of the day, you have to live with yourself. And I think that I, I like the little phrase that wa was <coughs> given to me some time ago, and it was about when it comes to women, we must use grace with grit mm -hmm. and sometimes grit with grace. Oh, oh I, love I that. like that. that. I, I think I, I love that. grace with grit and grit, grit with, with grace. grace. Mm -hmm. And certainly you did not become vice chair of the Ohio Democratic Party <laughs> without making that a mantra. Well, yeah, and you know, one of the things that I, I, I really find that as women and as we try to strive in, in our own roles, I, I see us as trailblazers and I mm -hmm. see us as sheroes that Oh, when you think about the Harriet Tubmans and uh, Patricia mm -hmm. Roberts and the Shirley Chisholms, they didn't even have as much to work with as what we have today. Yes, yes. And, mm -hmm. and I think that we do a disservice if we aren't bringing our young women uh, along to know that it's not going to be an easy road and not that you're all. going to have bumps in the road. So you might as well prepare yourself so that you will know that that little adversity is just preparing you for a wonderful opportunity. No crystal stair. No, yes, <laughs> there is I no hear crystal you. What were you going to say, Barry? I was going to say, I think it's amazing, and even in the introductions, that you know, when, when we were all introduced, that you're still saying the first. This was the first African-American woman, yes. you know, in these times. Uh, yeah, in these times, mm -hmm. in yeah. 2012, mm -hmm. that you're still saying, you know, I was the first African American woman at Texaco in, a, in an executive position. Mm -hmm. Okay. The Marsha was the first. Right. You yeah. know, right. And, and, I came and we're here still the first talking time. about first. We're yeah. talking the first time. We're still talking about first in 2012, and it's amazing to me. But one of the things is, as it was discussed, when you're in leadership, first of all, when you take that role, you decide to be alone. There's mm -hmm. nobody on your side. You know, there's nobody advocating mm -hmm. for you. Mm -hmm. um, there's nobody saying, oh, we think this is a good idea, you know, and we're going to put you out there. You take that step yourself. One of the things in my journey, and, and it's been, it was my journey through Texaco, through corporate America, mm -hmm. it was my journey through cancer. And one mm -hmm. of the things I learned, or three of the things I mm -hmm. learned that hold people back, 
okay okay from succeeding or from being leaders or for or for taking a dare or a challenge and the first thing i think is denial one of the things when i was going through texaco and even when you first get cancer you go oh it's not me oh you must be wrong the test must be wrong but the first thing you want to do is to deny a situation okay mm -hmm. when i was at texaco and i was in that battle other people were telling me oh it's not that bad oh it's <laughs> not that bad you know you're wrong it's not that bad just because you're the only one you know and they had been there years and years and years and had never been promoted the second thing after denial I find is that people are apathetic well, that's just the way it is mm -hmm. you know and the mm -hmm. same thing with the battle with cancer you know oh it's just the way it is I have it and you know I don't think they can do anything for me mm -hmm. they say they can't do anything for me so apathy is a big stopper it's a big blocker and then of the two of those I think the third biggest thing is fear fear mm -hmm. of being different fear of standing alone fear mm -hmm. of taking a chance fear of standing out from the crowd if you're not with the crowd you're not safe if you are with the crowd you're not, not safe. safe right <laughs> right right, <laughs> you know? right so I think those three things and I think that people who overcome or people who take a dare and be like Marcia and step out and say okay I'm gonna be in broadcast and then only I'm gonna be in broadcast I'm gonna be the anchor okay See, I and think I'm that gonna is so awesome. that is phenomenal I to just me. do I think that you are so you just an <laughs> You're just an incredible or woman. Or people like you who yeah. say, you know, I'm going to take control. Oh, yeah. I'm going to run the show. I'm going to start it. I'm going to run it. I'm going to own it. There are not a lot of yous out here. <laughs> there are not but a we, lot of but Michelle's we, but out we wanna, here. But, but Barry, my hope and my genuine prayer is that the next generation will have it different. Absolutely. It's but okay about being a trailblazer. But will they? I mean, because yeah, there's so many distractions. I, uh, with uh, this, gen is it Generation X? I, I, I lose. Don't. Right, I Generation, lose yeah. Generation yeah. X. Um, there's so many distractions for them, you know? And they don't understand, especially uh, within the uh, African American youth community, don't understand. I think you have to know your history. Exactly. And know, and know what happened for you to really understand if you don't watch yourself all that could be removed from you and you have to start all over again mm -hmm. all the groundwork that has mm -hmm. been laid you must be cognizant you know but they they're just you know the videos and the you know and they have everything at, literally mm -hmm. at the touch of their fingers and mm -hmm. and uh, that that's that's what is in front of them that is what is important to them that's how I see it anyway. you gave an interesting account to me well one of the <coughs> things that I always tell the young people that I teach at Central State and I and I said what's old is new and what's new is old mm -hmm. and what happens is that when they talk about let's just talk about hip-hop and rap well Phyllis Wheatley was a poet mm -hmm. Paul Art Dunbar was a poet. Mm -hmm. So what happened, the music just changed the, the, the culture, but the poems and, and the life stories mm -hmm. were already mm -hmm. there. So you're not talking about anything new. Mm -hmm. You just changed, you tweaked it. But what I have really expressed recently to my students is that when you spill the milk, you got to clean it up. Ooh. And, and, and mm -hmm. you can't expect for somebody else to clean up your spilled milk. Mm -hmm. And, and what I'm saying is take responsibility because the definition of an adult, in my mind, is that it's the moment that you assume responsibilities for your actions and you financially take care of yourself. So that could be at 10. It may be at 60 or it may never be. And, and I think that the whole concept of maturity versus age is what we really mm -hmm. need to work with with mm -hmm. our young people that they need to understand you may have the age mm -hmm. but you do not have the maturity the mm -hmm. emotional quotient yeah, uh, yeah very the good. EQ yeah, <laughs> yes and that's what we that's what we have to be distinguish to them because if your 18 year old child tells you I'm grown I'm leaving okay can mm -hmm. you take care of yourself yeah yeah but right. see I think the difference is our parents told us when we were gonna leave I know my mother told me you know you are gone it wasn't me telling her you know I'm 18 I think uh -huh. I better leave when I was 15 she said she she said I break your plate at this table okay which which is an old African proverb meaning that you no longer have space mm -hmm. at my table mm -hmm. you have to start making your own table I think when we were talking about the technology and things um, at the children's fingertips 
rap versus County Cullen or versus Phyllis Wheatley or whatever, is that it's filtered differently. Mm -hmm. That it's not organic. We got County Cullen, we got Phyllis Wheatley, we got Paul Lawrence Dombar, and it was organic. Now how they get it, it's filtered. Yes. They don't have to think yes. about it. Yeah. We had yes. to learn it. That's they right. don't have mm -hmm. to think about it. It's delivered. And it's delivered in such a way that it's filtered. And so they don't have to feel it. I know when I, uh, and I think about our age group, right. is that we were part of the struggle. We went through the struggle. We saw our parents struggle, right. and then we saw the whole struggle. That's missing for this generation, and that's what worries me about it, is that that's is that? missing. Is that I don't know if it's that? a fault. Um, Are we responsible for that? As, as, as parents, right. do, do, did we try to pave the way a little smoother? Is, have we done it? To the generation. Well, what do you think about that? Sometimes, right. I, sometimes no, I, think, think? I think that we have in our attempt to make everything so okay for them mm -hmm. because we, uh, our generation might be better educated than the generation yep. prior mm -hmm. to in terms mm -hmm. of uh, the whole. Mm -hmm. um, that we want to, oh, best schools, got to be, nope, that, that school doesn't cost enough. We've got to send them to the other ones, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know. Mm -hmm. And have we done this generation a disservice? Well, we came up in a generation with a doctor spot, too, where where the Dr. Spock said, you know, let these kids be, express themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, we came up in a generation where our parents, I mean, you, you can remember, most of us at this table in some form or fa fa fashion has protested or picketed. Oh, yeah. or done yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yes, yeah, so right? a kidding? true activist <laughs> in, right. in every sense of, of the, the word. word. Mm -hmm. and, and that um, We've experienced not being able to go to a restaurant and, and be waited on or ignored. Oh. We've oh experienced gosh, yes. these things. Mm -hmm. Our young people, what we're guilty of is not telling the story. Absolutely. That's wow. what we are guilty of Absolutely. is not, not telling, telling the story. But when you do tell the story, I, I, I go back to how we've made things easier for them and we've allowed them to ignore hardships whether they are financial or whether they are social mm -hmm. and we have mm -hmm. done that mm -hmm. by we placing did. them in arenas that are to, to make them think that they are going to be accepted no matter what and mm -hmm. that may not always mm -hmm. be true mm -hmm. and so we we have not told the story but when we tell the story they don't believe it oh mom you're right mom like you, you're too history. mom right. you're too right. sensitive right, right. yeah right. you're very you're too part sensitive. of it to them it's like ancient history because of the technology mm -hmm. and because of things like i said instant instant right. so something that happened you know what do they have those things oh this is old and this is new. Mm -hmm. They uh -huh. have all of these measurements. Mm -hmm. And old might be a month. <laughs> Actually, then you're right. right. Yeah, old old might the phone. Be a the phone this is, is too phone. old now. Right. All the right. technology, right. it changes. As soon as they bring this out, the next one that's coming. That's true. It, you know, and so old to them, old to us, or you know, what's what's old mm -hmm. is old. And we yes. cherish then, it. And, and we yes. cherish yes. it. And we hold yes. on to yes. it and mm -hmm. remember it and we celebrate it. Mm -hmm. But old to them nowadays to me is bye. a, it's it's just like like a nanosecond. It's like, it's like right. bye. You know? right. And it mm -hmm. is. And, and it is. And, and one of the things that, that uh, we were talking about in one of my classes is that how did it get that way? Mm -hmm. Who is in control of mm -hmm. marketing, mm -hmm. the merchandising, Filtering. and, and Filtering. Filtering. Mm -hmm. and, and so these young people, but we, but we are still take responsibility that when they were young, mm -hmm. that we didn't start telling them about their history. So mm -hmm. by the time, many of them, when they get through their school system, because schools now are teaching for you to pass tests. Right. And Absolutely. so therefore there's no time for that filtering of having alumni come in or important people. And if they do, they have one day and it, I mean, it doesn't click. Mm -hmm. right. So we don't have the jobs that they used to be able to have for young people where they can earn a living and or at least get a taste of how to handle money. Right. 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 And, and right. one of the things that's really missing in, in our uh, culture is the power of money and the absolutely. understanding yep. of absolutely. money. Yep. And, and, that, and where right. does that yep. come from? We have to teach them before they get there and not after. Mm -hmm. But the challenge is, and I've said this over the it? years, how, not only how do we do it, but when are parents and grandparents willing to uh, have a change of thinking mm -hmm. that will impact on these generations. If children grow up hearing their parents say, I hate my job, I hate my job, I hate this job, then as I tell parents, how dare you be 
upset that they don't want to leave the house and get a job. You've told them for 18 years you hate your job, and they, by association, are like, what do I want? When, they, mm -hmm. when children associate uh, uh, parents having a job but not ever having enough money. Right. And mm -hmm. that is a real American experience mm -hmm. today. And it was growing up. We didn't grow up with our parents having unlimited resources. If they did, they didn't talk about it. <laughs> but we knew there was a limitation and that we had to live within our means. My concern is that we, are, we have a generation that is emerging that has no concept. They have no concept or understanding, not only of the foundations of our culture that made us the women we are today. Because you just didn't happen to get to be strong. Strength is, is created through, again, that iron sharpening iron, mm -hmm. dealing with stuff, having to persevere and then overcoming and then moving to the next level. I, I don't, I don't, maybe I'm being wrong. You're in the educational arena as well as politics. What do you think? Well, I, 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 I think the number one social problem is education. I think the number one solution to social problems is education. Mm -hmm. But we, ha we have a generation that one of the things that we know for a fact, you can't teach what you don't know. Mm. So if you got a parent that doesn't know, how are they going to teach a child it, that's exactly what they how know? I, feel. Yeah. Uh, I, I think basic manners. We mm -hmm. are from a group that we were taught manners. Yes. We which is wrong. We assume that because they are certain age levels and things like that, that they should know manners. But if they haven't been taught, they don't know them. And one of the things I always say is that a five-year-old doesn't cuss. He just repeats what he hears. Hmm. And, and so I practice what I call verbal ecology. Because <laughs> uh, okay. okay. ecology is the cleaning of the earth and verbal is the cleaning of your mouth. So a kid's not, when you're in children, watch you yes they, they do. watch you they watch you when you don't even know they're watching you so if you're sending out these words the kids are going to repeat them because they came from someone that they admire and they see mm -hmm. and and i really mm -hmm. believe that each one of us every day every adult wakes up they are writing a news story mm -hmm. and there's people reading that story as they walk through the day <laughs> and that uh, what is your story saying is it a positive story is it a negative story because how they read that story tells a lot about you and how mm -hmm. it will go over into these young people's lives. So you're in the media, and that's been your, your story, and that's the, that's the position you found yourself for, for 30 years. It's a long time. What gem of advice would you give young people today? I would like them to read more. That is, uh, when I go to schools or go to organizations and, and young people are there, that's the first thing, that's the first message that I give them, mm -hmm. is, is to read. I want them to be knowledgeable. I want them to, to learn how to create a basic good sentence. To, to, because my mother used to say, and, and bless her heart, she was so politically incorrect back in the 50s and 60s, reading makes a ready man. Mm -hmm. I bel now we have to say reading makes a ready person. Right. Um, but but I just I just think you 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 become exposed to different lifestyles, different cultures, different events, different things that can help shape you. You know, perhaps you didn't get something from from your family, but to me, by exposing yourself through books and and just good constant reading every day, you you can become a different person and shape something mm -hmm. different. I agree. Mm -hmm. Books are magical. Yeah, they are. They, they are. Take what you about places. you, Barry? I think I challenge the parents um, of young children to spend more quality time with them. Yes. To spend. My mother did not have to compete with uh, iTunes, mm -hmm. iPod, <laughs> computers. Uh, and my mother used to say, I, and I laugh about this all the time, when certain TV shows came on, like Amos and Andy, mm -hmm or the little rascals or whatever, she would say, turn that off. That has nothing to do with you. Mm -hmm. I love that. Mm -hmm. Turn, turn that, that off. That, off. Right. that yep. has that nothing to do with you. Go read a book. Yes, mm -hmm. ma'am. That's what I'm saying. Go read a book. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I, yeah. I agree uh -huh. with both yeah. of you. Yeah. But I'm saying it's the parent to say mm -hmm. that because a parent should not have to compete with Facebook. 
ever. Okay, ever. Mm -hmm. Turn it off. <laughs> Right. You know, one of the things I love about, I mean, I love lots of things about her, uh, but I particularly loved when Michelle Obama said, you know, Sasha and Malia watch TV for a couple of hours on the weekend. That's I love that. It. Right. That's it. When more and more parents let the little handheld devices, the computer, the television, whatever it is, become the babysitter, i.e. the parent. Mm -hmm. So then the children don't have critical thinking which I think is important. You read, and then you take what you read, and then you, would ap you apply it. And you have to have critical thinking skills. Yes. You know, mm -hmm. whether it's money is a, is a utensil. It's, That's it's all. System, it's, it's, it's a, a utility. utility. It's, a, it's utility. a utility. That's all. Okay. So you have to have critical thinking. So whatever you're dealing with, if it's money, if it's people, if it's whatever it is, that you can deal with it, mm -hmm. and you can critically think. Is this good for me? Is it bad for me? Is it good or bad for the world? Mm -hmm. However, whatever your thinking is, however small it is or however large it is, it has to go through that critical path so that you can get the results that you want, however small they are, however large they right. are. Right. I think that's very, very wise <coughs> information that you've just shared, and particularly around uh, that whole lifestyle learning sequence today, and, and I am concerned because everything does not proceed rapid speed. No. Uh, and, and sometimes I wonder if we're not in the spin cycle. Do you ever feel like that? Oh, yeah. Is that All a part of aging? All where I'm time. like, wow, I'm just not getting this fast, mm -hmm. fast enough. And, um, and yet I look at the, the outcome. I look at where we are as a, a society today. Mm -hmm. And the rage and the, the, as you said, not having been taught manners. Mm -hmm. Basics, the basic stuff. It's just basics. Basics, like when you get a gift, write a thank you note. Thank you. Yes. Uh, exactly. Yes. Mm -hmm. Graduation, if people bought you something, are we not entitled to a thank you note mm -hmm. thank you. or something to acknowledge that it you appreciated it? And that seems to have gone by the wayside. Or is am I missing it? No. The basics. One thing that deeply concerns me and has concerned me since the first of these kinds of shows showed up, Big Survivor. Brother, Survivor, mm -hmm. you know, if you're not the way I quite like you or something a little wrong with you, poof, you're gone. They can just yeah. kick people out. Yeah. Yeah. That I saw everybody was so crazy about those shows when they first started maybe 10 years like ago. Them. They frightened me no, yeah. I because like I said, him. look at this. This is madness. Yeah. There's something not quite right about you, right. so I'm just going to erase you, and you just have to leave this house. You can't be around us because you're not this. You're not quite that. Right. I said, do you know what this message is? Right. My kids said, Mom, Mom, everything is, you blow everything up. I said, no, this is society as a whole. Right. This is what we right. are becoming, Absolutely. that there's, you're, you're, you're too something or you're not right. enough of something, and I'm just going to get rid of you. Yes. You don't deserve to be around me because I'm this and I'm right. perfect and I'm going to mow you down yes. and so that I can get that money. Mm -hmm. well, That's and, scary and to me. And I think that goes back to Facebook. If you say something I don't like, I just I'm not unfriend, unfriend you. you. Exactly. I, I, I exactly. was amazed because that's just how technologically incompetent I am because I have a Facebook <laughs> account. And I did not know how to get rid of people that <laughs> I did not like. They said something. I didn't know you could do that and until yes, recently. I, I just I my daughter said, unfriend them. Some I people said, got rid of me. How do you <laughs> do that? But see, that's unfortunate, again, because now you're only having people who believe what you believe. Exactly. Who think like you think, yeah. who want what you want. I mean, and that's unfortunate because that's not the way the world is. Not at all. And again, you know, you're in this cyber world. And mm -hmm. so you then carry that over into the real mm -hmm. world. And that's and a problem. That's the danger. That's a problem. That's the yeah. challenge. Now, okay, now the other thing I want to mention is that the, the value of friendship mm -hmm. has changed. So yeah. there's friends, oh there's associates, there's acquaintances, and I call there's passerby. Those mm -hmm. are people that pass by in your life, you have a relationship with them, and they're gone. Facebook has really uh, confused the issue on who's a friend. Right. And so and you have a lot of people now don't know the difference between a friend, mm -hmm. an acquaintance, mm -hmm. an associate, and a passerby. And when time, as strong women, yes, we know that when the times get tough, we know who our friends are. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yep. And they're few and far and in between, but those that are there are true. Right. 
And, and that's a test of a real friend. Because on Facebook, if I say something you don't like, then I'll immediately I unfriend you. Then therefore, you weren't my friend. And one of the that's things that I mm -hmm. think is very important that we have to learn as we go through life, I may be your friend, but you aren't a friend to me. And mm -hmm. we got to know right. those differences. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That is extremely powerful. I may be your friend, but you may not be my friend. Right. How does one make a, a difference? Because I look at all three of you, and I consider you friends. I do. I consider each one of you as a woman that if you had a need and I can help, I will help. But you're, you're certainly different from most. That's that sure. is a very disappointing mm -hmm. um, sense. It, it is, because mm -hmm. as we are in terrible times, no, no question about it, whether the politicians want to acknowledge it, I'm telling you from my side of the fence, yeah. as a money person, right. This is unprecedented. And I spoke to that actually on Facebook, which is, if you don't have genuine relationships, mm -hmm. right. you're going to starve. Mm -hmm. You're going to starve because nobody's going to be moved to help you. And, and that's relationships. That yeah. Isn't that what it's a relationship um, is about? You're seeing that already, not just, not just on a, a micro level with your friends. You're seeing that. I mean, that's what the whole push with the government is about. It's not even helping people. You know, who, when when the depression was before, the whole push was the government was to help people, right. was to make jobs, was to you know make social security, was to make Medicare. I mean, all of that came out of the depression. Right now, you see, we're in a depression, we're headed for a depression, and they're trying. You know, certain entities, certain political entities, are trying to even take that away. Right. So if you don't have your immediate friends, and the government is not your friend, you're just out there. That's chaos. That's mm -hmm. anarchy. Mm -hmm. I agree. What do I, you no, I, I agree with that. And, and I think that uh, as, as when we think about, I, I think it's a, a subterfuge to say that they want to make us think that, that it's the immigrants, it's, right. it's the Latinos, it's this group, and it's this. But, but the key issue is economic discrimination. Absolutely. And if all these groups could rise up together yeah. and fight back, on the economic discrimination would be a much better place. But a lot of the political entities that are in place, that's what they thrive on is this division. division. Right. But Which I, is but not but the big picture. It is conquer. definitely yeah. not the big picture. Because if we look at what's happening in terms of, of the notion of the middle class, which I've always questioned, it's the concept of a middle class. Mm -hmm. But as we look at this, the bottom line is that uh, People are becoming poorer. People have less. People are not, certainly not, ha enjoying the quality of life they did a decade ago. And there is this animosity against the government. And I guess I'm having a hard time understanding why are people so angry at the very entity to which we have been so, uh, so well rewarded, Social Security, Medicare. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think it yeah. goes back to what Barry was saying yeah. and, and the filtering and what Marsha was saying, all these little this nano minute mm -hmm. seconds, nano seconds. Of, uh, yes. of, of information, mm -hmm. and they only hear the last thing. Right. Yeah. And, and it just sticks. And, but the also it shows that in our, where we're going back to education, is that the people who are educated and are of means vote. Mm -hmm. The people who do not, do not vote and they do not participate in their government, and they see the government as an enemy and not as a place that is gonna put more pressure on them. I think of the book of 1980, uh, 1984, and was one sentence mm -hmm. in that whole big, thick book that, yeah. that really has got us right here now, that really frightens mm -hmm. me. It says, keep the masses ignorant mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so you can maintain your power. Right. And the very things that could help the people are the things that they are attacking. Mm -hmm. And number one thing they are attacking is education. Absolutely. Which I am just Absolutely. astounded. I, I guess maybe I'm naive here, but I did not realize there was so much animosity around the concept of education. Mm -hmm. What I don't understand is when I hear and read about state governments cutting education budgets. Mm -hmm. I'm like, first. what? I don't Why? understand that. I don't understand, right. unless it comes out of the elite mm -hmm. European model 
where the only people entitled to education were the elite well, and the money. I think that's where, where we're headed. And that's where we're headed. Yeah. That's and where that's we're headed. Very this isn't we're talking about America, but if you look at what's happening in Greece, what mm -hmm. just happened in Italy. This is global. Yes. This is global. It's not, like I said, if you want to live your world, you know, micro world, but we live in a global environment. Yes. Yes, so we, we live do. in a global economy. Okay? Right. We live in a global, what is it, the geopolitical. Right, right. And so if that what happens one place, it's dominant. Right. right. And if that doesn't get straight over there. Right. We're, oh, we're in worse trouble than we are now. It's not going to get straight yeah. over there. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> money lady. They Trust have me, to stabilize the money lady that euro that some it. kind no. of way. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. I think one issue that we yeah. haven't really mm -hmm. talked about, uh -huh. but I think that we need to just touch about it politically, and that's the fact that uh, the whole political agenda mm -hmm. in this country mm -hmm. has been against women's rights. Oh. And, 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 and I'm mm -hmm. talking about uh, Lily Ledbetter. And that, you know, uh, I'm just, I mean, you're yeah. just thinking about, um, and, and it's just amazing to think how far back we, that they want to push it. Right. And right. I, I don't know if it's back to Leave it to Beaver days where uh, I can be June Cleaver and I dress up and I cook and I wait for wards, but mm -hmm. it, it just mm -hmm. seems to be uh, a time where the value of, of a female and, and her presence is antagonistic. How did I, that happen? I, I'd like to know how it happened because I will tell you the thought of going back to that lie, first thing June wasn't even representative of the average female exactly. and certainly not an African American female. Right. We were cleaning June's house. <laughs> Yeah. Our mothers and grandmothers were mopping her floor. And June was running around and in June her pearls and her heels her with her apron and on. And talking about have a nice day. And we were like, <laughs> this is not a nice day. And we can't go back to June and, and Ward because Ward had a job. And there are no <laughs> jobs. jobs. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so there are no men leaving, going, you know, and coming back and providing. You know, it's um, generally, that, yeah, it's generally yeah, us working two and three jobs. Exactly. exactly. Yeah, it really we are is. Ward. Those right, of us that right. work, you know, we are right. Ward. So we can't go back to that. I think they're trying to push it back even further. Oh, my okay. God. I think they're trying further. to push it back even to further. Which to which era? Where? To, I mean, that's why you're getting Pre movies slavery? like. slavery Well, <laughs> post. <Okay>. Antebellum. <laughs> Antebellum. <laughs> Antebellum. I mean, when you look at movies like The Help. Oh, mm -hmm. You start looking at movies where women, this, this, that was a women's movie. Yeah. There were no real, there was a man in a scene in that movie, Harley. So there were the black women in that movie mm -hmm. in a certain role. There were the white women in the movie in a certain role. And the men who were in it were mean. Were the, the black men that were in it were mm -hmm. gratuitous uh, and mean. And, and I'm sorry, the black men that were in it were mean. Right. And the m white men that were in it were gratuitous at best. They right. just kind of, you know, kind of whistled in. Easily. But it, they except weren't. for the one guy who right. was so upset with her because she okay. was so kind to the maid. Right, right. But I think they're trying to push it back even further because when you talk about you talk about economic disparity, but they're also trying to do health, you know, uh -huh. women's choices, uh -huh. you know, your choice with your health, and they're even taking it back to the point that if you get rid of, if, if you just talk about abortion, that's one thing. But when, what was it? They made the move to take uh, breast exams and cervical exams Medical and all of those yeah. things out of Planned Parenthood and try to tie those things, just women's wellness, mm -hmm. to try to tie those things to, ab to abortion, no matter what you feel right. about it, to try to tie those two things together to get rid of everything. And you would be surprised at how many insurance companies don't pay for mammograms. Right. Are you kidding oh. me? Oh. I'm sorry. Now, here <laughs> routine, I am again. Now, now the routine mammograms, not the mammogram after you've already no, been diagnosed. No, that's the routine. Just right, the, the routine. No, the right. Preventive. Preventive. We, preventive. We'll, re preventive. we'll refuse a $150 mammogram. Right. Now, I would or rather pay, if I were an insurance company, pay the pay 150 the now than 150000 later if right. something's right. wrong and you don't identify it. Right. But, but see, what I'm trying to, to understand, and God, we're, I don't know when, when are you going to come back? <laughs> um, because this is not, this, this conversation has to continue. It has to continue because there's some good, th good things that are coming to the fore. But very, we can't go back to antebellum slavery. And women are not, cannot go back to a mindset that says that we are subordinate and inferior. 
is but that's what's being proposed all the time. When Liddy, when Lily Ledbetter did her suit, okay, yeah. and it, this is not news that women are being paid seventy percent of what men, right. and that's up from sixty four percent. That's right. When the yeah, equal yeah. pay law right. was passed, right. I, and this is what I used to teach at Fairfield University in the business school. I did a corporate social responsibility course, okay, and mm. we covered everything: civil rights, women's rights all kind of rights. So it's up. See, they're satisfied. They, they're they saying, why are you complaining about 70? When a few years ago it was 64 cents on right. the dollar, okay? Mm -hmm. That women have to work from January to April, okay, to get paid what men got paid mm -hmm. the whole time. So that's four months out of the year you're working and literally not being paid. <laughs> right. What a man is being paid, right? Okay, right. so for them to say we don't want equal, we don't want equal pay, okay? We don't want you to have a right to choose. We don't want you to have a right for preventive care. Where does that put us? Where does that put us as all women, not just black women, as all women? Those issues have no color when it comes to women. Wow. For them to say we're going to get rid of all the immigrants because there are enough Americans here to go pick the crops. That's why we're getting rid of, of these people, of the immigrants. That's mm -hmm. what they're saying. Okay, you want a job, you go back and start picking cotton. You go back and start picking fruit. That's mm -hmm. exactly what the answer that, is. That, that, can't, that, that cannot happen. And I'm going to say this because sometimes when the rubber meets the road, and we sit here as not only older women, but women that are seasoned and proven, through our own trials and struggles. Um, as I told my daughters, you all are going to have to be the ones to fight for this. You're going to have to be the ones to fight. You. You're going to have to fight again because there are forces that are determined to take us back to a place that we are not going back to. Yeah. You got to be kidding me. Are you going back there? Oh, no, no, no. Talking you know, about and, a revolution. I, <laughs> yeah, and you know, one of the things that we have to be consciously aware of, and, and I do want to put this in on the table, is that when we're not invited to the table, we are on the menu. Woo! And we got to remember that at all times. I love that. I love that. We have, um, time is up. <laughs> time is up. It went quickly. It, it did. Went, it this went fast. It was a pleasure. It went fast. So much to uh, think So much about. to talk about. I am challenged. Uh, Barry and I talked about yesterday about pulling together a um, an agenda, a conference. Yes, consortium. Consortium, a national of women like-minded, and to bring in our young women mm -hmm. in the rear to begin a, a woman of, a, of of her her caliber and your caliber and yours and myself. I a good place for, for that would be Central State University to start a public policy forum for women. I love, women it. With I love it. I love it. I love it. Yes. I love yes. it. Yes. I thank all of you for listening in to today's segment of The Power of Money. You take care and God bless. Have a good day.